In the news tonight, PM says Itoke land is safe. On the drive through a hit. And get vaccinated, says former patient. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nan. Ulunaka Fiji. Prime Minister Voring Mbaini Morama believes the opposition's stand on Itoke Land Trust Amendment Bill is racially motivated. The Social Democratic Liberal Party has mounted strong public opposition to the proposed bill, claiming it takes away the protection of Itoke landowners. Mbaini Morama has urged landowners not to listen to fear-mongering politicians. Kritika Kumar reports. The Prime Minister says this makes land easier to develop and more attractive to lease putting more money in the pockets of landowners. Politicians like Linda and Ngavoka and all these bush lawyers, in short, these people really don't care about the ordinary Tokay people. These are a bunch of urban elite who are nothing but stirrers. He adds they want landowners to be empowered and not afraid. Those who were in the TLTB management then, what they and others before them have done is kept the bulk of the Tokay people in the dark. They have no transparency, no empowerment. They feed the Tokay the fear of the Kaindia. Beni Marama says landowners will continue to receive market and equal returns from their leased land. And all he has advocated for and put in place and with my support and, and endorsement, the provisions of the constitution that set in stone the non-alienation of Tokay land, a Tokay landowner is getting market rates and the return of the Tokay land after being used for public purposes, all constitutionally guaranteed. The amendment helps make that land more attractive for the benefit of land-owning communities, increasing the premiums and lease payments they can get. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The drive through vaccination team at the Nandi International Airport has managed to administer more than 5,000 doses. Operations started on Tuesday and daily numbers crossed 1,000 Fijians coming to get either their first or second jab of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Felipe Nakaso has more. The drive through vaccination here at the Nandi International Airport has been hailed a huge success as the response has been overwhelming. On the first day, we've had people come all the way out from uh, Tavua and Lotoka, some from Singatoka, and um, just talking to people as they uh, come through, they feel that the best way of vaccination is a drive-through. It has definitely been a positive few days, as by yesterday afternoon, more than 4,000 doses were given out. So yes, we might happen to do it again next month. It depends. It all depends. Um, we are um, Fiji airports. We are blessed to have the uh, support of our CEO and our uh, board members. A way of also attracting people to get vaccinated, Fijians who got the jabs were given a raffle ticket which was drawn daily. This is my uh, family voucher. I give my family whatever they want, you know. $1,500 worth of shopping and food vouchers were drawn over the four days. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC News. A fully recovered COVID-19 patient says giving importance to the vaccination does save lives and avoids hospitalization. Ritesh Pal tested positive for COVID-19 at the beginning of this month and today is continuing with his daily life and has resumed work after recovery. Patel was not hospitalized as he was double vaccinated. Ritika Kumar again. Ritesh Patel was asymptomatic and believes every Fijian should take COVID-19 seriously. And if you take vaccination important, you can stay at home in the luxury of your own house and isolate yourself without any issues. Fijians can be part of the fight against COVID-19 by getting vaccinated. MOH people, they're working five times harder for people who are not taking this seriously. To ease everyone up, I believe vaccination is important. I personally, till date, did, did not have a single symptom. He adds staying at home is stressful, but it gives time to an individual to work on their health. Patel says he took advantage of the quarantine and re-evaluated himself on what he went through and what he can change. If you get vaccinated, you do your 14 days, you come back and start your life normal. But we are not looking at our own selves. I think we are looking at 
you know, general public what they are talking about. And you should take personal responsibility on your own and treat COVID as something which is serious and act on it. Patel got cleared on Tuesday and says his sole purpose in sharing his experience is to be able to help someone in need. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. To our latest COVID-19 update for tonight, Fiji had 918 new COVID-19 infections for the period ending 8 a.m. yesterday. The health ministry also recorded a massive 21 new COVID-19 deaths for the period 19th July to 21st July. Fiji has recorded 21,291 cases since April of this year. There are now 16,403 active cases in isolation with 4,729 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 161. The vaccination campaign also continues around the country. As of earlier this afternoon, 428,524 or 73% of the population has received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 90,531 or 15.4% have received their second dose. The five most vaccinated areas include Mba, which is now 100% first jabbed and 7% into the second. Next are Rewa, Nanonga, Nandi and Naitasiri. Up ahead, vaccination deadline nears for municipal market vendors and residents along Singatoka Valley in shock. Those criticizing health services amid the pandemic have been reminded that thousands of frontline workers are putting their lives at risk every day. Prime Minister Woring Mbani Marama says these individuals need everyone's support as Fiji battles a crisis of severe illness and deaths. The health ministry has been under pressure as hundreds of thousands look to the public health sector to provide some form of relief from the effects of COVID-19. Instead of us criticizing the frontliners, we should be singing praise. We should be helping them. No one should be criticizing them. We, this is not only happening in Fiji. It's happening all over the world. People are dying all over the world. We should be helping them. The ministry has taken fire with claims that swabbing and testing services are slow, results are not provided in a timely manner, and that there is no response to calls made to various helplines. Others have posted pictures and videos of isolation facilities for the COVID positive, claiming that the facilities are below par. I find it very disheartening that some people, including the media organizations, have sought to undermine this obvious and essential step, step to treat COVID-19 positive patients. Many people's lives have been saved in these temporary facilities. Questions have also been raised on whether Fiji's public health system is nearing collapse Dr. Fong says they are stretched, but they are holding together. Market vendors around the country have a few more days to get at least the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, and those who don't will be denied entry into any of the municipal markets. Local Government Minister Premila Kumar says this is in line with the announcement by the Prime Minister and the Health and Safety at Work amended regulation. Pranita Prakash reports. The directive is clear, get jabbed or stay out. And all municipal councils uh, were informed uh, of this directive. And the municipal councils are now working on this directive. And they have been uh, working closely with the market vendors and the vendor association. The market vendors association is also ensuring that vendors are adhering to the protocols. Uh, what we have done, uh, the, the council has continuously uh, doing the awareness uh, through the PA system in the market and uh, for us. We have did our uh, awareness on the ground, but uh, we are not uh, forcing uh, vendors. O'Neill says there is hesitation from vendors above the age of 50, mainly due to their medical conditions. However, local government minister assures that exemptions will be considered. In, in case of any exemption, of course we will honour that, because the exemption will be granted by the Ministry of Health. And uh, based on the exemption, 
uh, the municipal councils have to adhere that. From 1st November, these market vendors also need to be fully vaccinated. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. A number of residents in the Singatoka Valley are in shock after a few confirmed cases of COVID-19 were identified in the area. Turanga Nikoro of Mavua village in Nanonga, Ilikimi Chula Levu, says a few residents of Nambitu and Bila Levu along Singatoka Valley tested positive last week and have been taken to various isolation facilities. Josiah Nanunga reports the cases were bound to emerge in these areas given the gravity of widespread transmission in Viti Levu. Mavua village is surrounded by these red zone areas now, and the villagers have been advised to not let their guard down. As part of our amended community lockdown measures, a household member is only allowed to travel to town to buy essential items, movements only limited from home to the farm and return, and villagers must remain indoors at all times among others. The Nandrunga Nawosa Provincial Council members and health authorities have been liaison closely with respective village heads to ensure villages remain safe. As we've been continually doing from uh, the beginning of the pandemic until now, is uh, requesting all the villages in the province to be able to remain vigilant and uh, keep safe as there are some positive cases in the province now. As you can see on your daily update for the Ministry of Health this board. The Rokotui is encouraging people in the province to get vaccinated in a bid to achieve full herd immunity. Singatoka was classified as a non-containment zone for about three months during the second wave. Chosei Nanunga, FBC News. With crushing well underway for the Lotoka and Bar Mills, farmers in the Western Division say the guaranteed price will be a huge help. The $85 per ton of cane will be for two seasons after it was announced in the national budget. Philippe Nekasu with the details. It was definitely good news for cane farmers as the guaranteed price of $85 will allow them to also save. The announcement was very good for us farmers as it will help us a lot during this pandemic, especially like harvesting and cartage. And despite the forecasted price of $54.36 was announced earlier, majority of cane farmers in the West still went ahead and harvested as they know how important it is to get cane to the mill on time. But the new price will also assist growers that may be struggling due to the pandemic. You know, the farmer can save the money from that much. Eh? The new price, this is a little bit. Eh? This is more expense in the cane. Good news. Hey, news. This is good news, but it's only for two years. It would have been better for us farmers if this was for five years. The Sugarcane Growers Council has also welcomed the announcement, saying that this basically indicates that government continues to support the sustainability of the sugar industry. So this basically means that uh, the growers' cost of production would be maintained, and we would love to see that the cost are really maintained. They're also grateful for the help to the farmers in the form of fertilizer subsidies and the assistance in planting more cane. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Leading business, the Port of Suva has been nominated by the World Cruise Awards as Oceania's Best Cruise Terminal 2021. The awards is the sister event of the World Travel Awards, which was launched in 1994 to celebrate excellence in global travel and tourism. This year is the first annual World Cruise Awards. The awards aim to foster growth, innovations and best practices in the cruise sector on a global scale. Fiji Ports Corporation Limited Chief Executive Vijara Piasena says they are proud to be recognized for such a prestigious award. He says given the current COVID-19 circumstances, this good news will help make a better future for everyone in Fiji. Minister for Tourism Fayaz Koya says for Fiji and other Pacific countries, tourism offers important opportunities for recovery from the pandemic. Koya says it's important to provide a chance to build back better through the tourism value chain and investing in models that focus on the empowerment of local communities. Speaking at a recent webinar, 
Hoya says the pandemic has also triggered more interest from travellers demanding new experiences. He adds the Fijian government is focused on promoting local produce in the market, improving the livelihood of local farmers and lowering the food import bill. I would say it requires a regional approach as tourism and agriculture are two critical sectors for all of us. The pandemic has definitely provided us an opportunity to look within and see how as a region we can develop ideas to support our industries. And here are the exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar had a strong last day of the trading week as it gained against most other currencies. On to the commodities market. Increases all around. Crude oil at $71.72 a barrel. Gold was up to $1,807 an ounce. And silver increased to $25.48. And time now for Sharon to give us the latest on the market. Good evening. The U.S. dollar edged higher overall in choppy trading, moving with the ebbs and flows of risk sentiment. Earlier in the session, the greenback slid in the wake of higher-than-expected U.S. jobless claims data that raised concerns about the world's largest economy's recovery from the pandemic. U.S. initial jobless claims rose past 350,000 to 419,000 for the week ended on July 16. Meanwhile, the euro fell as traders processed the European Central Bank statement and comments by its president. The ECB met expectations by pledging to keep interest rates at record lows for even longer. Elsewhere, growth-focused currencies such as the Australian dollar gained as a global risk sell-off abated further. The Aussie was last up 0.2% against the US dollar. Next week again will be a busy one for traders as we expect key economic data from all our trade partners. Major focus will be on the US Federal Reserve interest rate decision coming out later in the week. But for this week, that's all I have from your HFC Bank, Vinaka. Roadwork is currently underway at several locations in the central, western and northern division. The work is being carried out under the RIP and Remake program. The Fiji Roads Authority is reminding motorists to slow down when approaching road construction zones. The FRA says the contractors have placed signs in advance to warn motorists. Motorists are urged to adhere to the 30 km per hour speed limit on construction sites. Back. Farmers in Oregon have lost thousands of dollars due to destruction wrought by the extreme heat and wildfires. A farm that was destroyed is one that grows trees for the Christmas season. The Victorian Multicultural Sports Association has dispatched hospital beds to Fiji, donated by the Royal Victorian Eye and Ear Hospital in Australia. In recognition of the volunteer work done during Melbourne lockdown by Fijian football internationals Tito Vodnowanga, Savenada Mbalindrokondroka, Aseli Mbatikasa and Penitui Ngulangula, Frankston City Council Mayor Chris Bolam says the city of Frankston funded the freight for beds to Fiji. This was $5,500 Australian. V uh, VMSA's relationship with the Fijian government continues to grow, organizing more future assistance for the health sector. He thanked the Prime Minister Vorengen uh, Banyamarama and his wife Mary for their continued support to the organization and for taking time out to visit VMSA even on their private visits to Melbourne. A letter has been sent inviting Banyamarama and the government delegation by the Frankston Mayor to visit Melbourne. The Prime Minister has accepted the invitation and the dates will be confirmed when borders open. They will be very beneficial. Uh, it will help out the people who are looking after the patients as well as you don't have to lift them up. It's all uh, done through electronics it, in hundreds of thousands of dollars, Australian dollars. And uh, most of the equipment is donated by different charities and different organizations. We have linked with the 
we work with the state governments, the local councils, and the federal government as well of Australia. And uh, uh, we have very good relationship with these organizations. Coming up in sports, Team Fiji set for Olympics. Leading sports team Fiji is now at the Olympic Games Village ahead of the opening ceremony tonight. Athletes and officials arrived at the village yesterday. Only 13 players instead of 16 from the Fiji 7 squad are in the Games Village and the same goes for the Fijiana. The Fiji 7 side will be in action on Monday with the first match against Japan at 12 p.m. followed by Canada at 8 p.m. Fiji's last pool match is on Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. against Great Britain. Fiji's identity will again be on show in tonight's Olympic Games opening ceremony. Rugby 7 stars Jerry Tuwai and Rusila Nangasau are Team Fiji's flag bearers. According to Fasanok Chief Executive, their athletes are well and raring to compete at the sport's biggest stage. I guess our, our uh, identity uh, will be in the uniforms that we wear, the um, Fasanok logo, is on all our uniforms and uh, and that that will act as a band. One of our athletes excited to be part of the 2020 Games is table tennis rep Shelly Yi. This will be Yi's second Olympics after featuring in Rio five years ago and she hasn't let her challenges get her off court. I don't have any training partner so I'm training with a guy from Vermont and uh, he's been a very good help to us, to me especially. He is uh, more experienced than me. Team Fiji will be represented by 51 athletes at the Games. Aquila Vama, FBC Sports. The New Zealand Ollie Whites have made football history in Japan with a shock 1-0 win over Korea. Chris Wood, who plays for Burnley in the EPL, managed the decisive strike in the 76th minute with a clinical finish from six yards. The opening ceremony of the Tokyo Olympics is tonight. With the final preparations underway, people in Tokyo still have mixed feelings about the Games. This Australian Olympic Committee boss John Coates has defended his awkward exchange with Queensland Premier Anastasia Palasuk. Coates uh, drew criticism yesterday for publicly ordering her to attend the Tokyo Games opening ceremony. This Australia and New Zealand have pulled out of the Rugby League World Cup because of player welfare and safety concerns related to COVID-19. Rugby Football League Chair Simon Johnson called it a selfish, parochial and cowardly decision this I can see was scored a try last night for the Eels as they lost 10-12 to semi valimais Raiders. Siva was also denied a try in the dying stages of the match. Here, as I said from sports, coming up we have the very latest in the weather as we head into the weekend. Fine weather prevailed over most parts of the country today. Now to the west, sunny and humid conditions prevailed. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, sunny with a cool breeze. In the north, mainly fine weather. Places we are checking out today are Singatoka, Ba and Pacific Harbour. Pacific Harbour had the highest humidity at 74%. At sea, moderate to fresh easterly winds moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 11.57 p.m. with high tide at 6.11 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.36. For tomorrow, fine apart from possible evening or afternoon showers. The outlook for Sunday, more fine weather. And to our shot of the day, beautiful sunset scenery at Barara Flats, Lotoka, sent in by Visha. In Fiji and Pulse, we ask, do you miss your usual weekend outings? I cannot be going swimming, spend time with friends, family. I really miss my weekend outing because I'm missing my friends to go racing, fishing and playing soccer. Yes, I miss going out with my friends in the weekend, especially to the movies and stuff.
And recapping our main stories, PM says Itoke land is safe. Nandi drive through a hit and get vaccinated, says former patient. For these stories and others, tune in to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question. This week we are asking, are you satisfied with the national budget? Visit our FBC News website to take part and you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our social media accounts. You can also download our FBC app to keep up to date with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mother Manda.